Hello, and in this I tutorial, I'm going to wrap up talking about the S3 object oriented system by talking about how you can generate your own generic functions. So, in the previous R tutorial, we saw that we can we use objects in R that, that we can use several generic functions with like summary, like plot, like um, several other functions, and they they behave differently depending on the t type of object or the object that was passed into the, the like several uh, other languages but it, in this video we're going to look at the other side of that coin and look at how we can create our own generic functions that are agnostic to the object that's passed into them and will behave differently depending on the object that's passed into them so that's what we're going to look at in this video I should note that this video is really for completeness because really creating your own ge generic function. I don't really see a reason why you would create a, your own generic function. It might be useful to create your own class or or your own data type as we saw in the last video if you uh, dealing with a new type of data that's not well defined in R but creating your own generic function you m might, might as well use the generic functions that are already there because they're what people expect but um, I'm doing this just for completeness really so let's dive into R and look at our, our examples for today so, so we saw we saw in the previous in the previous video that we can define a custom class or object type for our object which to um, makes our object behave differently depending on what object it is so I've written a method for the summary function for um, objects objects called um, message objects so we can look at that method if I just say summary dot message we can see that all it does is take the, is take the object type and any other arguments that the user passed in and it says the, the extra special messages and then prints whatever is passed in. So if I t take an object that is of class my custom class message, like um, the, t the test object, for example, I'll I'll get that output. But if I just take the summary of any old character object I get the default summary behavior so that's what a generic function is just different things depending on what's passed into it but how do we create our own generic function well it's very simple all we do is I'm gonna call mine my g for my generic and all we do is set that equal to a function just like any other function which is going to take whatever the user passed into it the object that the user passed in along with any any other arguments that they, they wanted to define and all our function is going to do is um, because it's a generic function we're not actually going to define anything within the function all we're going to do is basically say look at what object type we have and use whatever method is defined for our function for that ob object so we're just going to say use the my g method Now, if we, if we pass anything into that function, even if it's just a number, the function isn't going to know what to do because it's a basically dumb function. We haven't defi defined a method for that class of object. So, how do we do that? Well, it's like defining methods for um, the summary function like we looked at previously. So, um, in our case, this this uh, test object is of class is uh, of um, 
the message class so to write a function that will work for that we say my g dot message equals a function which again takes the object and any other parameters and gives a message like along with whatever the user passed in so now if I run the myg function on a message object we see that we we do get that output but what about all the all the um, objects that we haven't object types that we haven't defined methods for well we can use the default method so we can say my um, my g dot default equals function which takes the object and whatever the user passed in and says boring and then whatever was passed in If I now um, pass in something like a number to our function, which is something we haven't defined a specific method for, it behaves according to our, according to our default method. So that's how to create gener generic functions in R and you use them with any objects. Or, although creating generic functions, like I say, isn't that useful because no one will know about them and people just expect the generic functions that are already there to be implemented it's useful to know how they work because for example mean is a generic function so if we just look type in mean for example all we, all we see we don't actually see how the mean is correlated all we see is use the method for the mean because all it's saying is take whatever the user's input is in this case it's called x I called it object but in this case it's called x um, and run the appropriate mean method for that object so uh, um, in that case to actually get the um, mean function you need you would run something like look for something like mean dot default to see how to see how the mean is calculated um, for just any general any any general class and you can um, get, look at the means for several different uh, data types w one way to look at what what um, methods have been defined for a function is is just to use the methods function so I can say methods summary And I see my c custom uh, sum summary function there um, for my message, my message object. So summary dot message, um, and we can we can also look at uh, what summaries there are for uh, or what methods there are for. Uh, our custom functions so we can see 
my G. And we can see we've only got two methods that we define for that function, our default method and our message method. So that, that like I say, uh, being able to create create generic functions isn't that useful in itself, but it's just good to know how uh, art operates and how if you're looking up the source code for what seems like a simple function and all you, all you see is this use method um, output and it's not very really useful, that, that's where it comes from. So the, that was how to use S3 classes in R. In the next few videos, we're going we're to look at S4 classes, which are more strictly defined and, uh, and re reference classes. But for now, I hope you enjoyed this video and thanks for watching.